Okay, sorry. Okay, so we'll continue with uh, our week 11 topics. So in week 11, you have been introduced to higher order partial derivatives, right? So in higher order partial derivatives, you have seen in the beginning, you might have seen first uh, what are second order partial derivatives. And then you have seen in general what are higher order derivatives, <clears throat> right? And you might have seen several examples for it also. <clears throat> yeah. So you have these different types of representations for mentioning the higher order derivatives. And what does Clorett's theorem say for higher order derivatives? So suppose you are having, so these kind of derivatives are called mixed derivatives, right? So these are mixed partial derivatives. So Clarence theorem is mainly about this mixed partial derivatives. So if you have a function of two variables on a domain D in R2 containing a point A tilde and an open ball around it, OK? So if you have the mixed partial derivatives fxy and fyx continuous in an open ball around A tilde, then fxy at A tilde is equal to fyx at A tilde. So usually, we in uh, you might have noticed in Several functions you can interchangeably use fxy and fyx. You in general assume that they are equal, but you have to be careful mainly when it is in the case of um, piecewise functions. So there you have to be more careful. So in those scenarios, you may have a situation where the fxy and fyx need not be continuous in open ball around it. In that scenario, you see that the mixer partial derivatives may not be equal at that point. OK, so in general, uh, the continuity of X, X, fxy and fyx at a point guarantees the equality of the mixer partial derivatives at that point. OK, so this is for functions of two variables. So the same can be extended for functions of n derivatives and n variables. OK, so if you have a function of n variables, you know, you can keep on uh, doing the uh, partial derivative and get higher order as of higher orders of partial derivative. So, uh, so appropriately modified statement of Clarence theorem hold. It means what? So in that case, maybe for example, if there is three variable, then you have to say f x y z, f y z, y x z, and maybe one more term, maybe f z x x y. So like this, all of them should be continuous around the open ball a, so that they all are equal. So like this, you have to uh, write the appropriate. Uh, um, uh, terms because there will be several terms which are equal at that point. So you have the, all those pairs you have to identify and see if they are continuous at that point to give the equality. Okay, fine. So this, this is uh, the general introduction to higher order partial derivatives. So using this, you have to do the Hessian test. What is the uh, purpose of, of this higher order derivatives now? We have seen in the beginning, like in week 10, like um, how to classify the critical points is a very important thing, right? So finding absolute maximum or absolute minimum, the global extrema part is uh, uh, something completely different. But when it comes to local extrema, uh, classifying the critical points is a very uh, involved task. It's not difficult, but it's quite involved, right? So how to do that? We have uh, uh, seen how do we do that second order derivative test in the case of uh, one variable function? So what is that you do in the case of multivariable functions? That is where we introduce the Hessian matrix, right? So Hessian matrix is a matrix where you have all the uh, partial derivatives written in this format, right? So in the previous session, you might have first seen how to classify critical uh, points for functions of two variables using this Hessian matrix. So what you do, you consider a two, uh, two variable function f on a domain d in R2. If a is a critical point of f such that first and second order partial derivatives are continuous in an open pole around a, OK? So then what you do, you first have to construct what is your Hessian matrix. So what is your Hessian matrix in this case? How do you write hf? Fxx, Fyx, 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 then uh, Fyx and Fy. Fyy, Fyy. Okay. 
So now one condition is given to us that the second order, first and second order partial derivatives are continuous in an open ball around A till. So what does this guarantee? This guarantees us that by Clorette's theorem, what does this guarantee? Fxy is equal to Fyx. Yeah. F. Right? So for at A tilt, you can use this interchangeably. So you don't have to. Anti diagonal we are seeing. Yeah. So you have x1 here. Okay, at all of them are at A tilt. So you write it like this. So now you see that what is the special property about this matrix now? H of of A is yes. So you should note that H of of A tilt is a symmetric matrix. Okay, yes. fine. <clears throat> okay, so then what do you do? You find the determinant, right? So what is the step one here? Step one. First, we take the determinant of yeah. the symmetric. Yeah, first you have to find okay. HF of A. Right. So after finding HF of A tilt, what does that you do? You find the determinant. Determinant, determinant of HF of A tilt. Right. So if HF of if this determinant HF of A tilt is zero, then inconclusive. Four says test is inconclusive. inconclusive right and if uh, the determinant is neg uh, negative then saddle point yeah three says a tilde is a saddle point and if determinant is positive then you proceed to step three. Proceed to step three. So what is step three? Find fxx at a Okay. So if it is positive, then, then a tilde is a local, local minimum. minimum. And if it is negative, then a till is no, no, maximum. Minimum, maximum. Right? So these are the steps involved in classifying the critical points of a function of two variables. Right? So you have three steps here. So you have seen examples for this. And now we are going to see similar process for classifying critical points for functions of three variables. All right? OK, <clears throat> so let f of x comma y comma z be a function defined on a domain D in R3. Let A till be a critical point of f such that the first and second order partial derivatives are continuous in an open ball around A. So here also we are having the uh, assumption that you have the mixed partial derivatives, that those pairs. So for example, fxy and fyx are equal at A tilde. Similarly, fxz and fz, uh, fxz and zx are equal. Then fyz and fzy. So these kind of pairs you can pick and see that they are equal, right? <clears throat> they are equal at a tilde. Not in general at a tilde they are equal, right? Okay. So now uh, here, what does the Hessian test? Um, before this, let us write what is the Hessian matrix now. So what is the Hessian matrix at the point A tilde? Can you tell? X, X, F, F, X, 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 F of X, X, y, then F of X, Y, then F of X, Z. Yeah. And y, X, F of Y, X, F of Y, Which Y, Which is same as F, y. X, Y, right? Because we have the continuity condition. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. 
and here y y f y y z y z and here f of y z x z f of yes z x which is same as x z and here z x is same as y z y z then f of z z yeah so this is the hessian matrix you are going to consider right so now maybe we will give some variable uh maybe like alpha maybe this we call as beta and this as gamma okay just for convenience instead of writing the entire term okay just let us give some <clears throat> variables for each of these terms so that uh, it's easier to write the steps so what is your step one as usual find the hessian matrix first of all okay right? so once you find the hessian matrix you have to find alpha right so if alpha is 0 the test is inconclusive mam what is alpha yeah determinant. this is alpha determinant of hf of a till okay ma'am okay the test is inconclusive now if alpha is non zero you proceed to step 3 okay then what do you do you have to find what in step 3 you find you find beta right so you find beta so if beta is less than 0 then what happens only when beta is positive you see that you have a local minimum or local maximum so if beta is 0 then what will happen saddle point a tilde is a a tilde is a saddle point right and if beta is positive then proceed That's to minimum so the yeah. global maximum yeah then we do the step 4 we find what is gamma so you find gamma which is fx at a tilde right so if gamma is positive then you have a tilde to be a local minimum and if gamma is less than 0 then a tilde is a local maximum right <clears throat> so we have very less number of cases here so if you have alpha beta gamma so what is alpha beta gamma you just see here don't think that it is something new so just these things i have written it shortly right so what are the only possible cases first of all so if this is positive and this is also positive and this is also positive then what happens if all of them are positive then what is that you get local minimum right and if the determinant is positive uh, sorry if the determinant is negative determinant is negative this value beta here is positive and fx x at a tilde is negative if this happens then it is local maximum right and here if determinant is less uh, here positive negative is fine so here what happens if either determinant is positive or negative but this is negative if this is negative then it is automatically a saddle point so here suppose this is non zero and this is negative then whatever is this this does not matter okay it can be plus minus zero anything then you know that it is a saddle point okay so in all other scenario if this is ne uh, non zero and negative then straight away you write saddle point only these three scenarios are there right so all other cases what do you know all other cases 
what do you know test is inconclusive inconclusive yeah only these three scenarios you know local minimum local maximum or saddle point okay fine <clears throat> So, with this, let us uh, now solve some problems. So, first, let us just find the critical points, then we will classify them later. Okay. So, how do you find the number of critical points for this function? You can, in fact, yeah. My, ma'am, we do we find? We have to find the uh, gradient. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, what is the uh, uh, fx, fy, and fz we find. What is fx here? So here I guess it's e power. E to the yes, ma'am. E to the power x square minus y square minus two z square into two x. Oh, the question is into two x is there? Just let me check the question once. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Partial derivative will be into two x. Oh, you are telling the partial derivative. Right. Yes. Let me let me check the question also once. Mm, e no, yeah, if there is a mistake here. So it is e power x into x square minus y square minus 2z square okay so this is the function so now what is your fx so you have to apply product rule right so if you apply product rule so the derivative of the first term is the same so you will get e power x x square minus y square minus 2z square now keeping e power x as it is and, and differentiating this term with respect to x what is that you get Two x. Okay, and now f y, the first term is going to be the same. What is the second term? Minus two y. And what is the third term? The first, uh, uh, the first third term is the same. And minus here is four z into e to the power x. Okay. So these are your fx, fy, and fz. So now you are lf is equal to zero implies fx, fy, and fz are zero, right? So by equating them to zero, what is that you will get? So first you see that you have fx is equal to zero. So if fx is equal to zero, then you have some complicated terms. Now what happened? Uh, Okay, by the way, here e power x, here I made a mistake. So here e power x, what is the derivative with respect to y? What is the derivative with respect to y for e power x? E power zero. X zero, right? So e power x with respect to y as well as with respect to z, it is zero. Right? So here only you have these terms. So fy is equal to 0 implies you what? y e power x is equal to 0, which means in fact minus 2 if you want. So e power x will not be 0 for any value of x. So you will get y is equal to 0. Similarly, what happens if fz is 0? z equal to 0. Yeah. You get z is equal to 0. Now y is equal to 0 and z is equal to 0. If you apply them in your fx, what happens? x must be 0. So you get e power x into x square plus 2x e power x is 0. Which means now if you take e power x commonly, you have x square plus 2x is equal to 0. Which means x times e power x, x times of x plus 2 is 0. So, what are the solutions? X equal to 0 and X equal to, to 0. Right? So, these are the values. 
So you have y is equal to 0, z is equal to 0, and two values for x. So what are the critical points? 0, 0, 0, and minus 2, 0, 0. 0, 0, 0, and minus 2, 0, 0. All right? Is that clear? Yes, sir. OK. So these, this is how you find the critical points for a function of three variables. Now let us try to do the classification of this critical point. So now for all the upcoming problems, we'll find and classify the critical points. OK. So now for this function, first we have to find what are the critical points. Now what is fx? 2x. 2x. Fy? 2y. And fz is? 2z. So now del f is equal to 0 will imply? What does it zero. imply? All of them are becoming zero, right? zero. Yeah, x is equal to zero. Y, f, y is x, y, z. All of them are becoming zero. Zero. Yeah. So now, if all of them are zero, then what is the only critical point? Zero comma zero. Yeah. Okay. So now we have to find for Hessian matrix. You need to find all the Deriv second order derivatives. What are the second order derivatives? What is fxx? fx fyy? Two. Two. fzz? Two. Two. Now, what about fxy? Zero. Zero. fxz? Zero. Zero. Similarly, fyx and fyz? Zero. And fzx and okay, it is already covered in here. So that's all. So now we can write what is the Hessian matrix here. At the point 0, there is nothing to apply because there are no variables involved in the second order partial derivatives. So straight away we can write. So this is your a tilde now. This is your a tilde. So at a tilde is, can you tell the matrix? 2, 0, 0. 0, 2, 2, 2, 0. Some, someone is uh, making a lot of disturbance in this uh, class. Please mute yourself. OK, 0, 0, 2. OK, so now what is your step one? You find the determinant of this matrix. What is the determinant of this matrix? Eight. So this is step one we have done, and step two we find the determinant. So determinant of HF of A tilde is eight. So now this is a positive it's value. Positive. Yes, so if this is positive, then what is that we need to do? We should move to the F X X at uh, A tilde. Yeah. So we have a positive in a positive case. So next we have to see what is fxx, fyy minus fxy square. So it means which part we are considering, we are finding, we are in fact considering the determinant of this part. So the determinant of this part is nothing but fxx, fyy minus fxy square, correct? If you look at this Hessian matrix, it will be more clear. What is the determinant of this part? f of xy into f of yy minus f of yeah. xy square. So which is nothing but this is your beta actually, correct? So, yes. you, have, so you have to find the determinant of this part. So what is the determinant of this part? Four. So you see that 
now the determinant that is fxx fyy minus f square fxy square at a tilde this is 4 and positive so you see this is positive and this is also positive so you have two positives so it is not a saddle point definitely because for saddle point only if it is negative then you will have a saddle point so now you have a positive value here so now if it is positive then we are going to look at whether it is plus or minus right this alpha so alpha is nothing but the value of fxx at a tilde now what is your step four you have to find the value of fxx what is fxx Two. at a tilde it is two now this is also positive if everything is positive if all these are positive then what do you know about a tilde local minima yes it's a local minimum okay clear uh, ma'am one doubt yeah Ma'am, how can we Im immediately check that if the uh, higher order, sorry, second order or the first order derivative is continuous? This is a very straightforward case here. You just uh, have quadratic function, so polynomial function. So this is no, nothing. No, for other function. See, usually in the cases when you have function, smooth function, like you have like functions like this, there should not be any problem. Why, like polynomials like this. But when you have a piecewise function, you have to be a little careful. Mainly, you have to check the continuity at the point where the piece is occurring. Right? So, for example, I guess uh, maybe in the lecture itself, there was one uh, problem. If I remember correctly, it was um, something like this. F of x, y, x, comma, y is x, y, x. I, I don't remember correctly. It was something like this. By x squared plus y square and... Uh, Yes, zero here. Like Something like this. I'm I'm not sure exactly. All right, of it are variation of it. Sometimes they are root in the denominator or yeah, some something like this. Denominator. Okay. Yes. So for this, it was proved that the uh, par mixed partial derivatives was not continuous at the point zero comma zero. So it is not continuous, and hence you see that f x y at zero zero is not equal to f y x at 0 0 so it means at these end points you have to check first of all when, particularly when you have this kind of piecewise function you have to be careful otherwise usually whenever you are given some uh, polynomial functions like this it should not be a problem at all you don't have to worry anything polynomial exponential so for such things you don't have to worry okay <clears throat> okay so let's uh, do similar process for this function as well now what is your f critical point is zero x this also sorry critical point is your... zero yeah yeah critical point is only zero so now del f equal to zero implies x equal to y is equal to z equal to zero it means the only critical point we are having is zero 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 right okay so now what is your step one as usual find the hessian matrix so what is your Hessian matrix here? So you need, what is fxx? What is fxx here? Minus 2. And what is fyy? Minus 2. And fzz is also? Minus 2. And what is fxy and fyz? Sorry, fxz. They are zero. Similarly, f y x y z and f um, f what else is there? Z y 
y z and z y they are same i guess that's it so all these are again zero right so it means what is this hessian matrix now diagonals are all minus 2 and the remaining entries are zero right okay so now you find what is the determinant of this matrix so what is the determinant of this matrix minus 8 yeah so now this is less than 0 so you will not have case 1 case 1 is not possible right so you have case 1 case 2 case 3 and all others are case 4 okay so case one is not possible. Now let's look at step two. Oh, sorry, step three. So what is your step three? You have to find the determinant of which part? This part. So now what is the determinant of that part? Four. So which is fxx, fyy, minus fxy square at a tilde, which is four. Now this is positive. So you have alpha is uh, negative and beta is positive. Alpha is negative, beta is positive. So we have to now check what is the last quantity. So let us look at step four. So step four, you have, what well, you should check what is fxx at a tilde. What is fxx at a tilde? Minus 2. Minus 2, which is again less than 0. So now this is which case? Negative, positive, negative. So which case? Negative, positive, negative. So which case? It is case 2, right? Yes, ma'am. So this is case 2. So case 2. You see, you have A tilde is a local, I don't know when it comes to the corner, it does not write there. Local maximum. Right? Okay. So we have seen one example for local minimum and local maximum. Now let's look at this problem and do the same process again, finding and classifying the critical points. Now what is fx, 2x, fy, minus 2y, fz, 2z. So it is obvious that what is the only critical point? Again? 0, 0, 0. Yeah. So the only critical point you are having is a tilde is equal to 0, 0, 0. Right? And now we have to find the Hessian matrix. So for finding the Hessian matrix, so let's write step 1. So, you have HF at A tilde. Shall we write the matrix straight away now? Yes. What is FXX? Two. FXY? Zero. FXZ? Zero. What is FYX? Zero. And FYY? Minus two. Minus two. And FYZ? Zero. 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 So since it is a symmetric matrix, you know these two entries must be 0. And what should be FZZ? Okay. Now, the next step is to find the determinant. Now, what is the determinant of this Hessian matrix? Minus 8. It's minus 8. So case 1 is not going to be possible. So we have to see whether it is case 2, case 3 or the other one. So let's see step 3. 
So in step three, you have to find the determinant of this part. So now what is the determinant of this part? Which is nothing but fxx, fyy minus fxy whole square at a till. What is that? It is minus four. So two negatives. We don't have two negatives in case one or case two, right? So in case one, either two positive or case two, one negative, one positive. So the, these two cases are not there. So which case does it go to? So you have a non-zero determinant and you have this also negative. So you have to now look at what is the gamma value. So you have to see whether you have the third case. So now what is your step four? What is that you need to calculate in step four? Step four, you find what is fxx at a tilde. So fxx at a tilde is two. two. Now your two means this is a positive value. So now you see that here, if it is non-zero or negative here, whatever is the value, it is going to be a saddle point. So you don't even have to find this straight away. You can in fact write that this is a saddle point. Sorry. You don't even have to do this step four. It is not necessary. Straight away, we can write that this is not necessary. So I'm removing it. So straight away, we can conclude that. So from this itself, we can conclude that a tilde is a. So this is case three. This is a saddle point. Okay, so we have seen one example for local minimum, local maximum, saddle point. Okay, so now let us uh, look at another problem. So now for this problem, what is your del f? Four x cube. Four y cube. So if del f is equal to zero. You get so what is the only critical point? Zero comma zero. Yeah. Okay. So now you have step one, the construction of Hessian matrix. So you have HF at A tilde. So what is fxx? What is fxy? Zero. And fxz? Zero. zero. And f, uh, so this is symmetric matrix, so this value is zero. What is fyy? 12 by square. 12 by square. And here, what is fyz? Zero. 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 And symmetric, zero. so here these are zero. And here you have right okay so the next step you have to find the determinant so in step two what is determinant of this matrix yes zero. So in, okay by the way 1728 uh, x square y square z square Hold on. So this is just HF. Now what is HF of A tilde? Zero matrix. Zero. This is zero matrix, right? Zero matrix. Yeah. So since it is a zero matrix, the determinant is zero. So test straight away conclusive. you can say that? Inconclusive. Is, yeah. The test is inconclusive. All right. OK. So we have seen all possible cases. So let's see what happens now. So now what is your gradient function? What is your gradient function? What is fx here? We have y two plus y. Yeah, y plus z. And what is fy? z plus z. 
z plus x and then what about f uh, z x plus x plus y okay fine so now del f is equal to 0 will imply y is y equal to z minus equal to z, z. Z, and then z is equal z. to minus x and x is equal to minus y. Right? So now you see that you have minus y is equal to x and x is equal to minus z. So from z this, equal to y. Yeah, from this two you can see that y is equal to z. Uh, did I write it correctly? Let me write it properly, maybe step by step. Okay. So you have already y is equal to z. Now y is equal to minus z. So from this you have y is equal to minus x. So maybe we call this 1, 2 and 3. So from 1 and 3 what do you get? You get x is equal to z. Correct? y is equal to x right an equation 2 is given z equal to minus x yeah you get all sort of combinations but uh, you can just randomly choose any two so if i am picking one and three i am ending up with x is uh, see both the left hand sides are y so the right hand sides are equal so x is equal to z so if you are picking one and two then you will get that uh, z is equal to minus y and z is equal to minus x so x is equal to y so anyway you are going to get everything see now what is happening z is equal to minus x and x is equal to minus y, uh, minus z. So now what is happening? Is there any clash going on? So when yes. does this happen? When does this no, happen? When, when they are all Both are equal to zero. What happened? I by mistake zoomed in. So now they, let's call this 4. So now from 2 and 4 what do you get? You get x is equal to z is equal to zero. zero. So now x is zero, z is zero. So this should imply y is also zero. Zero. So now again, you are going to get the only critical point as zero, zero, zero. Okay. Fine. So now we are going to find. What is your Hessian matrix? So your Hessian matrix is so add a tilde. What is your matrix? Zero one one. Okay, so what is f x x? What is f x x? Zero. Okay. Similarly, what is FYY? Zero. Zero. FZZ? Zero. Zero. What is FXY? One. And what is FYZ? One. One. And what is FZX? One. One. So all of these are one. So it means all the diagonal entries are zero. And all of the angle entries are 1. So this is your Hessian matrix. Now what is the determinant of your Hessian matrix? Calculate and tell me. Calculate it quickly. Ma'am, is it 2? Yeah. Are you all getting the same answer? Yeah? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So now you see that you have a positive determinant. Now let us look at what is your step three. So step three, we are going to find what is the determinant of this part. So what is fxx? 
एफ वाई वाई माइनस एफ एक्स वाई होल स्क्वायर ऑफ ए टिल्ड वॉट इज दिस आंसर माइनस वन माइनस वन सो नाउ दिस इज नेगेटिव पॉजिटिव एंड देन नेगेटिव दिस सिनेरियो हैपन इन केस वन और टू नो राइट so it means which case does it go to if you have uh, some value a non zero value and a negative case here then it is case 3 right yes sir so now from this you know that we are in case 3 it means a till this is saddle point all right okay so let us do one more problem of this type so now what is your gradient function for this 4x cube plus yz 4y cube plus xz 4z cube plus xy okay this one may be is a little lengthy so 4x cube plus yz Four y cube plus x z, four z cube plus x y. All right. Now, your del f is equal to zero. Implies four x cube plus y z equal to four y cube plus x z equal to four z cube plus x y. Equal to zero, right? Now, from all these things together, what you get? You get four x cube equal to four y cube equal to four z cube equal to. Okay, we are multiplying a four here, so we are multiplying. Like, if you are multiplying, let us say x to this term, y to this term, and z to this term, then what is that you are going to get? 4x power 4, 4y power 4, and 4z power 4. What are they equal to? Can you tell me? Minus x y z. Yeah, minus x y z. Okay. So now x power 4 equal to y power 4 equal to z power 4 will imply. This will imply. X is equal to plus or minus y. Equal to plus or minus z, right? Yes. So this is what we get from here, and then now, if x f x is equal to zero specifically, we are considering you have four x cube, and then what is y z now? Y into z is in terms of x. So there are two possibilities, right? What are they? Tell me. See if x is equal to y plus or minus y and plus or minus z. So same sign for y and z. So case one you have to consider. So y and z having same sign. If y and z are having same sign, then what what is y z in terms of x? Yeah. So now you get x square into four x plus one equal to zero. So what are the values of x you are getting? X equal to zero or x is equal to minus one. Okay. Now suppose you are having different signs for y and z. Then what is that? You will get four x cube here in place of y z minus x squared, right? Okay. So now what are the values for x? X is equal to zero, or x is equal to one by four. 
right now similarly you have to do this for fy is equal to 0 now for fy is equal to 0 you have 4yq plus xz is equal to 0 now again here if you take um now you have yeah, xz right you have to, yeah so here also you are going to get different values for ys plus or minus 1 by 4 and uh, z also you are going to get plus or minus 1 by 4 right so depending on the signs of um, so similar similar to this case you are going to get either y is equal to 0 y equal to minus 1 by 4 or y is equal to plus 1 by 4 correct these are the scenarios you are going to end up with is that fine yeah yes sir. now if you take fz is equal to 0 again again the same scenario is going to happen so here also you are going to end up with these possibilities so now from these values can you tell me what are the critical points how many critical points what is the first one of the obvious critical point zero 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 yeah and then Minus, minus 4, 1 by 4, 1 by 4. Okay, so you can put minus 1 by 4, 1 by 4, 1 by 4, and then? 1 by 4, minus 1 by 4, 1 by 4. 1 by 4. Minus 1 by 4, 1 by 4. Minus 1 by 4, 1 by 4. Okay. And then you have one by four, one by four, minus one. Minus one by four. Okay. What happened? And then you have minus one by four, minus one by four, minus one by four. Yeah. So you have these five critical points here. Right? Okay. So now for each of this critical point, we are going to verify whether you, uh, you are going to have a local maximum, minimum or saddle point or the test is inconclusive. Like this, you have to check for each of this critical point. Okay. So maybe we call this A1, A2, A3, A4 and A5. Okay, so now let us do it for A1. So first let us write the general step. The step one is common for all the metrics. Let us simply write what is HF. Let's not write HF with A till. What is HF? What is FXX? Yeah. Sorry, I have a doubt. See, can we not? If you are saying x is equal to y is equal to z, mm. you can equate it to k, right? And then I get to two. They are not equal. They are plus or minus y, right? They are not all equal. Okay. Because okay. When, when you do that, it will get 0, 0, 0, minus 2, minus 2, minus 2. No, it is not all equal. You have plus or minus here. Okay. okay? Fine. Okay, so here fxx is 12x square and what is fxy? 0, 0, 0. Careful, what is fxy? This is your fxx. What is fxy? See, this Dead. is your Dead. Yeah, so this is your fx, fy and fz. So from this you can tell me. So you have fxy is z, yeah. and what is fxz? Y. Yeah. And what is fyx? It is going to be same z. And what is fyy? 12y square. And what is fyz? Uh, X. Yeah. So now since it is a symmetric matrix, this is y and this is x. 
correct and what is fzz 12z square 12z square 12z square okay so now we have to find the determinant at each of these points okay fine let's do it step by step okay so step 2 calculate and tell me the determinant of hf of a at each of these points what happens at 0 0 0 so if it is 0 what what can you say for a1 Test which case yeah the test is inconclusive what about for determinant of hf at a1 a2 calculate and tell me minus 1 by 4 1 by 4 1 by 4 what is the determinant calculate and tell me you just have to tell me the sign that's sufficient for us the value is not important positive so it is positive right Okay, what is the value for determinant of HF at A3? Positive or negative? 1 by 4 minus 1 by 4. 1 by 4. So it is the yeah. again it is positive, right? Yeah. So now this is also positive. Okay, good. So now these two are positive. So we have to move to the step three for the other two. But anyway, let us finish this determinant of HF of A3 and A4 before step. Three. What about these two? Verify this as well. So this is A only A4. Four and a five, sorry, a four and a five. Tell me the signs of a uh, determinant of HF of a four and a five as well. Yeah, what are the signs? A4 is also positive. Yeah. Ma'am, in A5, the y coordinate is minus 1 by 4 or plus 1 by 4? Y is minus 1 by 4. And Z? 1 by 4. I guess it's all minus 1 by 4. Just a minute. And yeah. it's all minus 1 by 4. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all minus, sorry.
Este. Yeah, what's the answer? Positive or negative for A5 determinant? Positive. Yeah. Okay. So now we can move on to step three. So now what is step three? You have to find what is the value of fxx, fyy minus fxy whole square at a2, similarly at a3, a4, a5. For this, you have to calculate find the signs so what is fxx fy y minus fxy square in general so it is 144 x square y square minus z square so this is your fxx fyy minus fxy square so now calculate the value of this at A2, A3, A4 and A5 and tell me the signs. Since there is a square, irrespective of the sign, this term is going to be some positive term. And you have a very huge number here. So automatically, can you guess what is going to be the sign always? positive yes you can easily guess that it is going to be positive you don't even have to calculate because you see you have a very large number here and uh, all their numbers are just 1 by 4 1 by 4 because there is a square it is going to be 1 by 16 1 by 16 so here you are having a huge number against just 1 by 16 here right so what is going to be the answer it is going to be positive only so if all of them are positive, then what can you uh, say? So you have now step three is not going to come in picture, right? Sorry, case three. Because here you have both positive, positive. So only thing you have to see is that whether the last part gamma is also positive. So what is the last part gamma? Fxx at a tilde. So now what is Fxx at a tilde? You have to calculate. Calculate and tell me what is Fxx at a tilde? For A1, A2, A3, A4. Three. What? Fxx. Fxx is 12 x square. So you have, again, it is going to be the same square, the same sign because it is 3 by 4. Square. Yeah. So A2 or A3, all are going to be same sign. In fact, same value. Right? Yes, ma'am. So f x x at a four, f x x at a five is exactly equal to three by four, and this is also positive. So, what can you conclude about all the points a two, a three, a four, a five? They are local, local minimum. Minimum. All these are local minima. Right? Okay. So yes. when you have multiple critical points, you have to do the same procedure, but you have to do it for each of these points. Okay. That's all. Okay. So now let us do this problem here. So the, the same problem which we have done so far, we are now having it in a given in a different way, slightly in a different way. Okay, so now read the question first of all, everyone. Just take two minutes to understand the question. So what is the function we are considering here? Can you tell me? XYZ. Be careful, you are finding the minimum value for the surface area. So, which function represents the surface area? 2XY plus 5. 2XY plus 5. 
So this is what is representing the surface area. It's already given in the note, right? So you see that the surface area, let's call S of X comma Y comma Z. So this is your surface area. It is given as two times of X, Y plus Y, Z plus Z, X. So now we are going to find the minimum value for this. It means we are going to find and classify the critical points for this. We are going to find and classify critical points for this function. What other information is given? The rectangular bo uh, box has a val volume of 1000 unit. What y does that mean? What is the formula for volume? X, Y, Z is equal to 1000. Yes. It is given that X, Y, Z is equal to 1000. Okay. So now from this, let us try to calculate the critical points. Now for finding the critical points, you have to find what is the gradient of S. So what is SX? So maybe from this, you can reduce one variable. So using this given information, so if you replace maybe Z with, you can replace actually any uh, variable, any one variable. So if you are replacing Z with 1000 by XY, then what happens to your S? S of X comma Y comma Z becomes two times of XY plus YZ, Y into 1000 by, by X. It's simply 1000 by X, right? And then plus 1000 by Y. Okay, so this step is not required. Straight away you write. Okay, so now let us find del S from this. So now what is uh, what is your SX? What is your SX? Minus 1000 by X squared. So first you have two times of Y. And then you have? Minus 1000 by X squared. Minus 1000 by x square so you will have a 2 here that will get cancelled with this 2 okay similarly what is s y what is s y 2x 2x of x minus 1000 by y square 2x minus 1000 by y square all right now if this s x is equal to 0 what was what is that you are getting So if Sx is equal to 0, you get 2x squared y minus 1000 is equal to 0, which gives you, which gives you, y is equal to 500. so there is a, so this 2, um, 1 by x is here, so 1 by x means you will have, so is this, two getting cancelled did, did we do it correctly or is the two still there so you have one by x so what is the derivative of one by x with respect to x it's minus two by x squared right yes so there is a two here as well not in the denominator in the numerator only we are getting the two so we are having a 2 here as well. So this is actually 2000 here and here. Correct? Yes. Yeah? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So then you have. Yeah. So now x square y is equal to 1000. Similarly, s y is equal to 0 will give you 2x uh, y square minus 2000 equal to 0 which means x, y square is equal to 1000. Okay. So now you have x square y is 1000, x, y square is 1000. Now it means x square y is equal to x, y square. Correct. Now what does this mean? x square y minus x, y square is equal to 0. Now taking the x and y commonly, what is left? 
x minus y y so now x what are the options you get or y is equal to 0 or x equal to y x equal to y y all right now is it possible that either x or y is 0 because you have x y z is 1000 no. since no x y z is equal to 1000 x equal to 0 or y is equal to 0 is not possible so what is the only case we are left with X we are only left y. with yeah we are only left with x is equal to y okay now from here now what is that we can tell now x square y is equal to thousand now if x is equal to y what do you get so what do you get x cube is equal to thousand so if x cube is equal to thousand then what do you get x x equal to 10. 10. if x is equal to 10 and x is equal to y so this implies y equal, y to, is equal, y equal 10. to 10 okay now z is equal to now you know that z is equal to thousand by x y so what is your z then 10. 10. also 10. 10 z is also 10 <laughs> right so your yeah. x y z all are 10 okay now what is your hessian test saying so first of all now this is a critical point for us right now this is a critical point for us 10 10 10 10 comma 10 comma 10 is a critical point for this function s or if you are just considering it as a function of two variables x and y then 10 comma 10 is a critical point for this Maybe here I can remove the set. Okay. Considering as a function of two variables. So considering it as a function of two variables. So for this only 10 comma 10 is a critical point. Okay. So now this is a critical point. Now for functions of two variables, how do you find the uh, Classify the critical points. You have to anyway find the Hessian uh, Hessian matrix. What, what is your Hessian matrix? So for that you need to know what is S X X S S X uh, S Y Y and X X Y. So what is S X X? So this is your S X. What is S X X? The first term becomes zero. What happens to the second term? You will 6, have. 000. 6000 by minus minus 4000 minus 2 2000 by x bar x cube 3 x cube this 4000 by x cube correct yes and what is syy similarly 4000 by y cube right now what is the value of sxy Right. So now, what is your Hessian matrix? HF four thousand by X cube and two two four thousand by Y cube. So what is the specific value at uh, ten ten? What is the matrix? What is the matrix you are getting? If you are four, putting 10, 4, 2, four two, 2, and 4. So now, what is the determinant of this matrix? 12. 12. 12. Which is positive. Okay. So now, what is the next thing we have to find? FX. We have to find? FX6. FX6 sxx at a tilde so what is the value sxx at a tilde is again just four which is positive. positive positive so now both of these are positive what does this mean 
लोकल मिनिमम जीरो कमा जीरो इज अ लोकल मिनिमम फॉर एस ऑफ एक्स कमा वाई सो नाउ वॉट इज द वैल्यू ऑफ एस ऑफ टेन कमा टेन that is that will give you the minimum value right what is the minimum value is what they are asking so we need to calculate what is s of 10 comma 10 so if you put 10 10 10 here what is that you are getting two times of 100 plus 1000 divided by 10 and 1000 divided by another 10 so when you simplify two times of Hundred plus hundred plus hundred. So what is your answer? Six hundred. Six hundred. So the minimum value of the surface area of your this uh, box rectangular box has a value volume of thousand uh, unit cube. So what is the minimum value of the surface area? Six hundred uh, units squared. Units squared. Okay. So this is the answer. Is that clear? Yes, ma'am. How did we get the answer? Okay. Yes. Okay. So instead of considering it as a function of two variables, using the given inform uh, sorry three variables, using the given way uh, information, we reduced it to a function of two variables to simplify our process. That's all. Okay. Consider a function f of x comma y comma z, given in this way. If A is the Hessian matrix of f of x comma y comma z at this point, we have to find these things. So we have to basically find what is the Hessian matrix. So first, let us write what is f x. What is f x for this function? Three x plus three y plus three z. Three x plus three y plus three z. And what is f y? Nine y square. Nine y square minus six. And what is f z? Three x cubed square. Three x cubed square. Yeah. Minus four. Now what is f x x? Three. Three. Okay. And what is f x y? Zero. Zero. And what is f x z? Zero. Zero. Now what is f y y? Oh, eighteen y. Eighteen. And what is f y z? Zero. Zero. And what is f z z? Ah, six z. Is this sufficient to construct the Hessian matrix? Ah uh, yes. Yeah. So h f is three, eighteen y, six z. And then you have x y is zero, x z is zero, y z is zero. Okay. Now, what is the Hessian matrix at zero comma one comma one? Three zero 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 eighteen zero zero six. So now. What is the determinant of this matrix? Calculate and tell me. Six four eight. So determinant of H F at zero comma one comma one. It is a diagonal matrix. So how do you calculate the determinant? Multiply the diagonals. Three point five. What is the answer? Eighteen into eighteen. Three point four. Three point four. Three twenty four. Ma'am, f x is three x square, right? FX. I think. Uh, oh yeah, here I missed a square. So here it is then six x, right? F x x is six x. Sorry, here it is six x. So if it is six x, then at zero comma one comma one, this value is becoming zero. Sorry. See how one small mistake is affecting the entire answer.
So the determinant is zero. So option one is correct. What about the rank? Two. Two. So for diagonal matrices, how do you calculate the rank? Number of non-zero elements, positive. Number of no, not necessarily positive. It can be positive or negative. So just uh, see how many number of non-zero diagonals you have. That is the rank of the matrix. Okay. For diagonal matrices. So rank of A is 2. So this is the answer. If rank is 2, what should be the nullity for the 3 by 3 matrix? According oh, to rank, rank is theorem? Rank is 1. Nullity is equal to column. Yeah. Okay. Very straightforward question only. Okay. So what is after this? We are almost done with this unit. Just this last definition is there. But uh, don't worry too much about this definition. This is just for uh, uh, knowing purpose only. You don't have to worry about problems from this uh, differentiability of four multivariable functions. OK, so what is differentiability? First of all, for one variable function, you know that you say a function is differentiable at a if this limit exists, right? So limit h goes to 0, f of a plus h minus f of a by h exists. OK, and what do you know in general? If f is differentiable, then you say that f is continuous at a. So this is what you basically study about differentiability of one variable function. Now, what you also see for differentiability of one variable function is that, so if you see that one function is differentiable at a, then it means that the tangent line of f at that point exists. OK, and we also have seen even in the multivariable case, Tangent and best linear approximation are just the same. They are not at all different, even for multivariable functions, right? So the same is the case for one variable function as well. Okay, so the tangent and the multivariable functions are exactly the same. Now, how do we get the differentiability for this uh, multivariable function? How do we get this definition? So now just let us observe what is happening in the case of one variable. OK, fine. So now what is the definition given to us? The definition given to us is f is differentiable at a. What does mean by f is differentiable at a from this above definition itself, you see? This is what is given to you, right? So you have limit h goes to 0 f of a plus h minus f of a by h is 0. So this is what f dash of a. f dash of a is equal to this. So let me just write the same here. So f dash of a is limit h goes to 0 f of a plus h minus f of a by h. OK, now. We can rewrite it as correct. This is okay. I have just brought this to the other side. Is that okay? Now I want to bring this inside the limit and also bring the the uh, common denominator as h. How do I do that? How do I do that? Multiplying it by h. Multiplying and dividing it by h. So you get f of a plus h minus f of a minus f h times f dash of a whole divided by h. Okay. So this is 0. Okay. Up to this, is it fine? Yeah? Yes. OK. So now let us compare it with what is given here. Limit h goes to 0, f of a plus h minus f of a minus h time. Here we have h into f dash of a. Here we have the dot product of h with the gradient, gradient. function at a. And instead of just h here, because all these are just real numbers, just putting h does not make any problem here. But if you just put h here, so all these are now uh, scalars. And this will be a vector. H is something like an n variable, right? So you need to consider the norm here. So you see a similar 
thing we are getting here. Okay, so this uh, equation, don't think it is some alien equation. It is something you can relate from the basic definition of differentiability. Okay, so this is what is exactly F is differentiable at A. So this is much, much stronger than what is you see for partial derivative or directional derivative. This is much stronger than that. Now, this guarantees you the continuity at A. If F is differentiable at A, then it is continuous at A. And you also have all these equalities. Okay. So this is just something you should know. Don't worry too much about this. Okay. This You should know this definition. And you should know that these three are equivalent. And you should know that F, if F is differentiable at A, then it is continuous at A. If you know this much, then that is sufficient for this topic. Is that fine? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes, okay. ma'am. Okay. So now this is the end of uh, week 11. In fact, the end of the entire uh, math 2 syllabus. We are done with the syllabus. So in uh, week 11, what are the things we have seen? In week 11, we have first seen what are higher order partial derivatives and how does Claret's theorem help us to equate uh, mixed partial derivatives. And then we see classification of critical points. That is the main topic in week 11. So first we saw what is Hessian matrix. And then uh, we see in Hessian matrix uh, is how it is used for classifying critical points. So for functions of two variables, we had this procedure. And for functions of three variable, we had this procedure. So you know how to apply these things. And uh, then finally, we saw what is the differentiability of n variable function okay so that is all there in week 11 um i hope uh, you uh, have seen the updated schedule of uh, the revision session did you all see the updated schedule for revision session yes ma'am okay fine so please uh, keep up with the updated schedule. It is not yet updated in the calendar. I will update it uh, tomorrow itself. I will update it there. So make sure you are, uh, don't miss any of the revision session because that is going to be very useful for the NSM. Uh, also, okay, uh, you have Madam, a, What about the YouTube uh, link for this session?